There's nothing like League. And this is the Betfred Super League. time of the week again welcome to this week's edition of eddie and steve the podcast thanks as ever for the support of the game's major sponsors bet fred well last week it was all about lee winning the challenge cup in such dramatic style at wembley this week it was back to the bread and butter of the super league and the race for old trafford a race that has five more games left to run before we can confirm the playoff places and relegation it's a race that would have excited the great and legendary Sir Michael Parkinson, a fervent fan of the game who so sadly passed away last week at the age of 88. Steve-O, we were privileged to meet him on a number of occasions. The game has lost one of its biggest fans. Unbelievable man. He loves sport all the way through. Obviously involved in cricket, but as you say, his love for rugby league he often said to me, I don't know how these guys can do it for 80 minutes. He said, you just knock some balls, you know what, out of each other. And it is such a wonderful, wonderful game. And you know, Eddie, I, I can remember it was a 100th year celebration. Uh, and it was just a situation where they invited uh, Parky to, to host the celebration, which was held at the, the George Hotel in Huddersfield. And one of my greatest thrills was interviewing the man who is classified as the best interviewer of all time. Still to this day, Eddie, I think to myself, how lucky can I be to interview the best? Absolutely. So the finest interviewer the world has ever seen was interviewed by you. That's a great claim to fame, Steve-O, I tell you. Well, and not on top of that, it was just a privilege, Eddie. Yes. And you know something? It wasn't anything big for him. It was, is it, oh, more than, more than welcome. You know, get on with it. Don't bother telling me what questions you're going to do. Just interview me. And that's the type of interviewer that he was. Obviously, he did a lot of research. He had to. But he never backed down, did he? He always seemed to have the ability to get the best out of whoever he was interviewing. A great man and a sad loss. Yeah, a real sad loss. I mean, we were privileged, weren't we, also to sit next to him in the uh, in the box at Wembley on Challenge Cup final days. Uh, oh, numerous occasions. And he was great fun. He really was. Great fun. Oh, I, I, he had a good sense of humour. He was so mad on cricket that I often uh, met up with him uh, in Sydney, at the Sydney Cricket Ground. when Whenever the England cricket side was over there, uh, we would always meet up uh, in the long bar at the Sydney Cricket Ground. He was a, an am amazing man, a wonderful, wonderful man. Steve-O, interviewing Sir Michael Parkinson. I cannot believe it. Anyway, let's move on very, very quickly and talk about last weekend, Steve-O. Wakefield against Castleford. Uh, what a great win first up for Danny Ward as the Castleford coach there's still a long way to go though five games remain Greg Eden's hat-trick saw the Tigers home but I tell you what both Wakefield and Castleford they've got some programme left haven't they between now and the end of the season they certainly have Wakefield they've got Selford St. Helens Catalan Lee last one is away Hull Kingston Rovers Castleford perhaps a little bit as strong St. Helens, Warrington away, Hull at home. I think that will be the game that perhaps uh, Wardy will be saying, that's what we have to win. Because the last two games for Castleford are both away, Wigan and Leeds. And that's not going to be easy. 
Not at all. And Leeds, of course, now knocking on the door again of the, the top six after their victory over uh, Warrington on Sunday. We'll come on to that in a moment or two. Uh, Andrew Fafita, Steve-O, he was interviewed on the uh, the pitch by uh, Jenna Brooks on Sky and uh, reports today that he has been spotted playing for a Wakefield amateur club over the weekend. He's come out of retirement, pulled the boots on, and he's played in the amateur game. I mean, what's going on? Do you think do you think the Fafita brothers are going to play a part in Wakefield's last five of the season? It wouldn't surprise me, Eddie. Would not surprise me at all. Uh, the connection uh, with Wakefield, and look, both Wakefield and Cass, they are uh, they're in a very very dodgy situation. You look at what we just discussed, who they've got to play, uh, and it, it it's going to be everyone's going to be on edge and we said it a couple of weeks ago it's called panic <laughs> and they're, tr they're trying everything they're trying to bring bring players in outside and I don't think that we've finished from bringing an Australian or a New Zealander over in the next four weeks to see if they can just avoid that awful word relegation Indeed. I mean, you look at the the five matches you've mentioned, you know, uh, St. Helens are involved in matches against the two of them. There's the two whole clubs are involved, Wigan, Warrington, Leeds, Lee, of course, Wakefield play Lee at Lee. Uh, I, do you know, if if you look closely, can you see either of them getting another win, in all honesty? I, I, I've picked it out, Eddie. I think that Wakefield... Uh, will try to aim for the last game. Obviously, they'll be trying to make sure that they, they get a win between, you know, over Salford, St. Helens and Catalans and Lee. But their last game is at home against Kingston Rovers. Castleford, St. Helens, Warrington, St. Helens at home, difficult still, Warrington away, Wigan away, Leeds away, and in between that, Hull at home. And I'm sure that Wardy and the Castleford team, they'll realise we've got to win that whole game. So the black and whites and the red and whites could decide who goes down. Indeed so. Indeed so. L let's just look at Friday's game in a little bit of detail because after the match uh, between Wakefield and Castleford, there were calls from John Keir and Jamie Jones Buchanan. They were commenting on Sky for the game and they have... Uh, so they suggested a change to the offside rule moving forward. Can't be done this year, for, obviously. Uh, but uh, laws of the game currently state that a player, if he's inside the 10 metres from a kick, is deemed to be offside. Now, on Friday, Matty Ashurst was inside the 10, but only just as Wakefield chased a dab through by Luke Gale, which was dotted down for a try. Ashurst, well, he ambled forward. He didn't chase the ball. He ambled forward. He wasn't interfering with play. His presence had no influence either on the attackers or the defenders, but he was pinged for the penalty. Some sympathy that the laws should be changed to reflect this. So, in other words, passive offside or active offside, I suppose. What's your view about all that? Well, the thing is, it's the law of the game. And we can't just, because they're not being involved, that we change things. Why should we have to change things? Look, the game evolves around a defensive effort. You've got to be 10 yards away. Remember, 10 yards. If, you, if you're not 10 yards, you get penalised. So there's no difference for people to say, oh, we should change the rule because, well, all the player was on the left-hand side and this player was running up on the right-hand side. The, the law just states, simple, Stay on side. There's only one way you can resurrect that and get over the top of it is whoever has kicked the ball runs in front of every one of their own player. That puts them all on side. You can't just say, oh, well, he had nothing to do with it. That's, that's nothing. The rule states, well, you're offside. So he should have stood back and waited and did till the kick. It's the same with the kickoff. If you're in front of the kicker when they're kicking off, you'll get penalised. So all this, all this, well, I think it's stupidity, but 
you know, picking picking hairs and saying, well, oh, well, he had nothing to do with it. The thing is, the law states, you're offside. I can understand exactly where you're coming from, but if the guy is, okay, eight metres, eight and a half metres away from where the ball is dotted down, not interfering with anybody. They've done this in the round ball game, Steve-O. If you're, if you're not interfering with play, you're not uh, impeding the goalkeeper, they wipe they wipe the offside uh, decision out. So I can see the argument from both sides. Yes, it's in the laws, but is it time for a change? No. I don't care, I don't care what they do in that soccer game, that round ball or whatever. <laughs> We're talking about the greatest game of all, which is rugby league. And as far as I'm concerned, uh, stop, stop worrying about changing the rules. We have changed the, the laws. We have changed certain things, which has been an advantage. 40-20. That's been a great advantage. And probably the most important one is the fact that if you got caught and you hit the, the, the corner flag, then it was an old try. I mean, how many wonderful tries has that created? Now, they're the two that I said, yes, let's have a look and change it. And they did. And it helped the game. But being offside is not just as a matter of fact that they've kicked to the left and you've run onto the right. The law state, you're offside. Fair enough. I'm not going to win this argument. That, <laughs> that, that, that is plain for everyone to hear. Right, also on Friday, Salford. They ended a losing streak in some style. They won 32 points to 8, Stevo, at Huddersfield. I think that's the end of Huddersfield's very, very slim top six chances. Salford, again, back in the mix. It, it's amazing. They seem to bounce back. You know, it was only a couple of weeks ago that, you know, everyone said, oh, well, Salford, they're doomed. They won't get back into it. And yet, look, this is probably one of the tightest finishes in the league table for quite some time. Now, I'm not talking about the top of the tree. I'm talking about making the playoffs. It's going to be so exciting uh, that it it's amazing how our game is bringing up one of the best contests that we've ever had. We had a wonderful Wembley. It was, it was magic to watch all those three games at Wembley. It did our game uh, the world of good, especially with Lee winning. With all consideration, Hulkings and Rovers, they could have won it. And they deserve to get the, uh, the accolades. Uh, but what a great story. You couldn't write it, could you? How many people said, they're calling themselves the Leopards? <laughs> Do you know, what, down Wembley Way... It was. I was frightened to death that I was going to be attacked by all these leopards. Many years ago, remember the Keithley Cougars? They they changed the whole aspect about it, and and the people from Keithley started going and watching the game. Sadly, they got overlooked. They weren't allowed to go into Super League, and quite frankly, with all the PR that they'd done, uh, they were bitterly disappointed, and and maybe. You know, at that time, Keithley Cougars, they could have done what Lee have done. We'll, we will never know. They, they were never given the chance, were they? No, they weren't. Although they're, they're having a little bit of a, a resurrection themselves, the Keithley Cougars. Now, some other results from Friday night. Uh, Hulkingston Rovers beaten, 28 points to six. Uh, and Wigan beating Hull in golden point extra time, uh, 13 points to 12. Harry Smith coming up trumps again results not going to form especially at Huddersfield and Salford being back in the mix here's the here's the way it looks Steve-O Salford, Warrington, Hull, KR they're all level on 22 points Leeds and Hull two points further adrift what a race it is we talked about the relegation issue what a race for these playoffs it, it, it's been the best for excitement and, and some of the games and that's what you guess when, when it's tense when you when you know, like we've mentioned, the word panic, uh, fighting to get in, into the playoff situation, that's in itself will attract more and more people to go watch our wonderful game. And let's face it, any rugby league fan worth his salt will have their eyes on Wakefield and Castleford. They'll want to watch their own team. They want them to win. And the first thing they'll say 
uh, how's Castleford going? How's Wakefield going? Because it it's excitement. And that's what our game's all about. It is. A little bit of jeopardy doesn't do anybody any harm at all. Uh, I think Lee, you know, all right, they were beaten by Catalan Dragons who stay top of the table. I think Lee, they put up a fight. They led at half time against the Dragons. They're in the top four now, Steve-O. Uh, they're fourth place. They're six points clear of Warrington with just the five games remaining. Byring a, a nightmare run of form. Lee, <laughs> blimey, I'm, I can't believe I'm saying this, a year after coming up from the championship, Lee look like they are in the playoffs and in the Old Trafford mix. Well, and and every right, because, uh, you know, they showed it to, at Wembley that, that they've got the wherewithal to ensure that they, they win a trophy. Uh, I, I was a bit sort of thinking to myself, well, did they enjoy that win at Wembley? And of course they'd enjoy it. They'd, they'd go out and celebrate, etc., and so forth, have more than a few drinks, and they've every right to do that because they've shocked the rugby league world. And I thought, oh, maybe they'd falter. I knew that they'd perhaps struggle in the second half, but to be in that contest at half time, Eddie. I think everybody in rugby league said, wow, I expected them maybe to just turn the toes up. They don't turn the toes up because it's the leopards. And as far as I'm concerned, I don't think leopards turn toes up. <laughs> I've never really studied them, if I'm honest, but uh, it may, <laughs> maybe we should all have a look. But Lee, cup winners beaten, Rovers Runners up, beaten, and they shipped in three tries in ten minutes in their game. Willie Peters, the coach, far from pleased with all of that. He said, we can't expect to make the six playing like this. I think that keeping their fingers crossed that Jordan Abdul will get back onto the field and quickly. Yeah, well, they certainly need him. I mean, look, he's, he's a powerful player. He's, he's what you could call a pivot uh, most of the play is around this guy, uh, not just with handling the ball, but with his kicking game, etc. Um, you need someone like that. Uh, they're in the mix. Don't worry. It's uh, it's it's thrilling to see. And I, I honestly thought that Leeds perhaps would start going on a downward spiral, but they fought back. I mean, that was a, that was a great win for the Leeds Rhinos. Against Warrington on Sunday, you're right. Um, a bit of a defence, a bit of an error, apparently, from uh, Matt Dufty. He he dropped the ball over the line in the last play of the match to have won the match for Warrington had he held on to the ball. He's been defended by Gary Chambers ever since. But it's eight straight defeats for Warrington right now. I wonder if Sam Burgess has got an eye on what's going on. Well, of course he will. And, and, and also, talking about the Burgesses, um, there's speculation about his brother coming over to, to play in Super League. Now, it, it's already signed an extension for South Sydney. Now, if it was to the point where Sam said, I'd like you to come over and play for Warrington, then I could understand that. But there's word about that the Leeds Rhinos want him. Yeah, we're talking, that, the, we're talking about Tom. We're talking about Tom. Yeah, where's that, but where's that come from? Well, it's people like you sending, you know, lighting the flames and fanning them on, and uh, you know, let's see what happens. You know, all well, the speculation I've, I've, in the press—that's what it's all about. Yeah, but I've, I've never mentioned perhaps a player. <laughs> I've never <laughs> mentioned a player that's just signed a, a, an extension to a contract with a Sydney club that is on her way back to England. Um, are you trying to accuse me <laughs> of trying to incite yes through the media yes that that these things that we talk about are not true yes absolutely i remember in the old boots and old days you looked straight <laughs> down the lens of the camera you picked up a piece of paper and you ripped it in two and you said that's what a contract's worth nothing and threw it away so it looks like if Tom Burg uh, Burgess does come over from South Sydney his contract <laughs> in Australia is worth nothing either but you're right Leeds are favourites to sign him why, why Steve are Leeds linked with just about every player reported to be coming home from the NRL can you tell me it's simple they've got the best organisation they've got Gary Hetherington who in my mind should be running rugby league full stop but 
knowing Gary, he'll probably say to you, I've got a nice job at Leeds, <laughs> and he does a great job. Look, this man, this man has got rugby league running through his veins. He is the best organiser, is the best PR sir, person. It is just unbelievable that he just knows how to get a good player. He doesn't always get them, but I tell you what, he's always in the mix. Do you know what? It's people like you and me that confuse the fans. Don't get me involved. <laughs> and so, therefore, everyone has said, oh, well, it must be coming. Because Eddie and Steve always says, I can't well, believe that I can't believe that, <laughs> that there's so many people out there that actually believe what we come out with. Well, we've been right in the past. Well, you have, <laughs> once or twice. <laughs> oh, dearie me. That's what, oh. Listen, that's why I love rugby league, Eddie. But, uh, you know, you and I are steeped in it. We worked together for a long, long time. Uh, and, and we love it. And, and that's the reason why we can talk like this now. Indeed. Because, because that's what the Rugby League fans want to talk about. And all right, we, we may throw throw something out into the open. Maybe he's coming back. Maybe he's going to so-and-so. <laughs> that's journalism. Uh, it's, it'll, it will never, ever change. An old guy once said to me, he said, you'll guarantee if you cough once, then you've got a cold. If you cough <laughs> twice, you've got pneumonia. <laughs> and that's that's how the press and the media work. Oh, it's coughed twice. Pneumonia. <laughs> play at the weekend. <laughs> I think the people who listen to this podcast know it's two old fools just having a bit of fun for half an hour every week. That's what I think. Have you have you just <laughs> worked that out? <laughs> <laughs> it's taken me thirty five years. Oh, finally, dearly finally, oh the, dearly. The, the Listen, finally dropped. You're listening to two guys who just love the game of rugby league, and we try our best to give you maybe inside information, but I can assure you, we're not always <laughs> right. Stop it! Stop it now! You've you're, you're ruining the uh, you're ru you're ru I'm, like, I'm trying to think of the word. You're ruining the image. Your That's life. The, your life. And you, you, you've ruined that. You're ruining the image, Steve-O, that we've got on this podcast. Look, look, <laughs> listen. This weekend, talking about things that are going to happen, we have a repeat of the Challenge Cup final two weeks on. Hull KR at home to Lee and Charnley, a big doubt for the Leopards. Uh, and, of course, Charnley, remember way back in the day he was on loan from Wigan at Hull Kingston Rovers in his uh, career earlier on but 22 tries in 21 games he'd be a huge loss for Lee if they, if he doesn't make it for the weekend he's a quality player always has been I've always enjoyed his, his attitude um, uh, he's one of those guys when you watch him being tackled or tackling someone else uh, have you noticed that it takes the opposition ages for him to get up and play the ball He's either got an arm in the, in the right position or a leg or he's spinning around. Uh, I've never known anybody that's been tackled by him that has the ability to play the ball quickly. He's a very, very crafty player. He is. There's another hell of a game as well, by the way, on Saturday. The Catalan Dragons against Wigan Warriors. What a match that will be. Saturday night, 6 o'clock live on Sky that's probably one of the best that we'll see this year now Wigan have been a little bit up and down as we know um, Catalan took a while to get going against Lee last weekend um, but they have got the firepower the only thing that I have against the Catalan Dragons is that they give away too many penalties and I'm talking about the hooker uh, there is time when you know irritate the opposition yes it, it's crafty or whatever but Macalorum has to be careful because in tight games that penalty given away could be the difference between winning and losing and he's suspended for this week as well that's been decided already he's out precisely yeah. but when he comes back Eddie he's got to be able to understand these are tight games. These are games that you have to win. You've got to get those vital two points. And especially when it comes to the playoffs, it's so tight that 
penalty given here or there throughout the game could turn it against you. It, it, look, it, it's one of those players, a little bit like we've just been talking about in regards to the fact that he irritates the opposition. But sometimes you irritate the referee. And you can't afford to do that in tight games. No, you can't. You can't. Not with five matches remaining. All right, the four points cleared at the top. They are favourites to win the League Leaders' Shield. Do you think they're going to get to Old Trafford, the Catalan Dragons, steve Everyone th- seems to think they might. Oh, well, I'm not a gambling man, but a couple of shillings wouldn't go astray. Uh, it's no fluke that at the top of the league table, they play some really good stuff. They're pretty solid. And forget about all this garbage that people come out. Oh, it's unfair. Everyone else has to go down to the south of France. It's not right. Of course it's right. They have to do it nearly every other week to come the other way. And a whole host of their back end of the season fixtures have been and are away from home. So if they get there, they'll deserve it. Yeah. And and look, they've they've got the firepower. They've got everything, everything in order. Uh, their defence at times can be a little bit loose but they have so much ability that they can come back they can score tries from anywhere on the pitch they're a very very good outfit they coach well they understand it they've had the experience of building 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 and they have the confidence the team spirit is second to none but, as I mentioned before, they've got to make sure that McAloran does not give away penalties at vital times. It could ruin their chances of lifting the trophy. I'm sure if he's listening to this, he will take all that on board. Hey, look. Oh. <laughs> it's, it's been great, oh, fun. On, it's been great fun this week. Go on, go on. I'm, I'm just looking out of the window that I can see the moon. <laughs> listen, listen, there's no way in the world that McAloran will take any notice of what I say. <laughs> oh, and I'm not good, sure. And good on him. Good on I'm him. Not, I'm not That's sure. That's only my opinion. I think people take a lot of notice of what you say. Uh, and be- before we depart for a week or two, because I'm not here next week, but we do have a special interview with the Catalan Dragons head coach, uh, Steve McNamara. I've caught up with him, and it's a fascinating listen. That's next week. Before we go for a fortnight, then, any any other news, any other gossip that's come to the ears of the great Steve-O, the man who interviewed Michael Parkinson all those years ago? Well, it's down to down under again now South Sydney are in danger of missing out on the top playoffs Uh, they had a loss to the Newcastle Knights 29 points to 10 and their coach Dimitriou is under pressure and a lot of people are saying why have they allowed Burgess to go and coach in Warrington when he should be in the position to take over from Dimitriou. Now, the word has it that the coach and Cody Walker, one of their more experienced players, had a training session at a fallout. And I mean, not just, I don't like you. Evidently, it was pretty bad. And there's also callings by the fans saying that the likes of Latrell Mitchell not playing to 100%. They pinpointed it on television that he never backed up, he never was in a position to... And they can't say that he's not trying, but from the evidence that they've been showing on TV, uh, he's not in the right position. And so they reckon that perhaps mentally he's not up to it. They're suggesting that Dimitriou, the coach, is not up to it. And it just shows you one thing. Start losing games in Australia and the chop is coming out. Head on the block. Isn't it great? The pressure. (laughs) The pressure. The media. The lovely. The TV. The radio. Yeah, exactly. And you're saying that Dimitri is under pressure. They're not happy that Sam Burgess is coming to Warrington. Are you starting the rumour that South Sydney will try and get him to tear up his contract at Warrington before he arrives? Here we go again. Oh, I would never dream of thinking that. <laughs> but there is there is one other thing to it, 
And, and this is another problem, is that South did have uh, perhaps a lot to complain about. Now, Newcastle Knights were leading 12-4 at the time, and they scored a try, which took them away, and obviously at 29-10, they won quite convincingly. It was on a seventh, uh, eighth tackle. Eight? They had, a, they had a repeat, and it should have been stopped. Ball handled over after the seventh tackle. The referee got it wrong, and on the eighth tackle, they scored the try. And it really just sank the South Sydney rubber toes. But wow. a lot of people are saying it's only a mistake. But I'll tell you what, it's a costly mistake that could see South Sydney miss out on the playoffs. And not only that, could see their coach showing him the door. And that is a first. I've heard of in the old days before there was the seven tackle restart, I've heard about try scored after seven tackles the referee got the count wrong but eight I mean that is just a little bit too hard to bear Steve O've been brilliant this week loved every minute of it and uh, won't be here next week we'll, uh, we'll do Steve McNamara in a special but we'll be back the week after so uh, stay fit stay well and talk to you again very very soon goodbye top man goodbye top man